Good morning. My name is Peter Sharoshi. Uh, I'm uh, the editor of the Drug Reporter website and uh, welcome you all who are watching us uh, to the uh, to Drug Reporter's live video series, uh, Frontline Stories from the Frontlines. In this series, we are uh, talking to people from different European and uh, other countries about what is happening with uh, uh, harm reduction uh, uh, after the COVID-19 uh, uh, epidemic started. And today we will discuss the situation in uh, one of southern, southern European countries, Spain. Uh, I have two guests uh, with me, uh, uh, one from the southern part of the country, one from the northern part of the country. Uh, one is uh, Nuria Casada from Energy Control uh, from Barcelona. And uh, also I have here Pedro Quesada from the organization UNAD. So um, how are you guys? How is life now in uh, Spain during uh, quarantine? So we are, uh, we are confined as, as all the world and uh, well resisting this, this situation. Um, thanks for having me. It, it, has a, it has been a great opportunity to take a shower. <laughs> so thank you to having me. Pedro, how are you? Fine. Well, if I can say fine, you know, the situation is not very easy in Spain. I must say, if, uh, to begin with, that uh, I represent UNAT, which is in the, in the whole uh, state, not only in the south. And uh, as you may know, uh, the situation in Spain is really hard. Yeah. We are uh, one of the of the more affected uh, countries in the in a European Union, and uh, this means that uh, we are the first in the in the global health uh, uh, COVID 19 uh, crisis. You know. And where so where are you now? Where, where are you now? Where are you based now? Are you from Madrid or? From Andalusia? Yes, uh, we, we are based in Madrid, my entity, uh, but personally I live in Andalusia, obviously, yes. Yeah, okay. So my first question is just to please uh, uh, tell me about your uh, organizations and uh, what kind of services you provided uh, before the crisis, uh, what is the focus of your organizations? Maybe uh, we can start with uh, Nuria from Energy Control. Okay, well, first of all, I want to say that uh, I am the coordinator of Energy Control, which is an harm reduction project uh, that works in nightlife settings. It's a, it's a project of the Spanish NGO, Asociación Bienestar y Desarrollo, ABD. And ABD offers support to vulnerable people, such as people who use drugs, and manage different programs and services in different areas prevention, treatment, and social reinsertion. Energy control is, is a part of the prevention area and it, it offers interventions in nightlife settings as well as drug checking services, among others. Uh, the drug checking service uh, works on site uh, at parties and festival, but it also, uh, it also has stationary service present in four Spanish cities. And in addition, it also works uh, by postal, receiving samples from both, from Spain and other countries. Uh, re regarding ABD, manages several uh, treatment centers and supervised consumption rooms in Barcelona, and which offer uh, the basic and typical services. Thank you very much. What about uh, you and UNAD, Pedro? UNAD is a Spanish network of more than 200 entities. Uh, we work with people who use drugs and their families uh, through all Spain. Uh, we serve to about uh, more than 48,000 users. We count on uh, about 2,800 professionals and plus uh, 2,800 uh, 2, volunteers that work together with these professionals, okay? We can say this is uh, one of the most important network in the drugs field, and we count on the main entities in all the country. One of them is ABD, which uh, is one of the most important entities in, uh, in UNAP. We work all through the, the complete country, south, north, and 
all the regional governments work together with, with, with us. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about how this uh, epidemic uh, changed the lives of your clients uh, and how did, they, how did it change the drug markets uh, where you are? Uh, well, what about our Barcelona? Well, that, that is the million dollar question. We don't not yet have much information about how the COVID situation has impacted particular drug habits and drug markets. Although we do have some hypothesis based on feedbacks from networks, users, <coughs> and mass media, for instance, about how the drug users are now buying drugs. But we need uh, to have solid data so at this moment, we are running an online survey to collect information about the impact uh, that COVID is having both uh, on, drunk, on drug consumption patterns and another market variables, such as availability, availability uh, purity, and prices. And this survey is being conducted with three European countries, Portugal with Cosmic Care Association, Italy with Projecto No Travel, and Spain with energy control. So the collected data will not only improve our knowledge at the national level, but will also allow us to make comparisons between the, these three countries. But if we focus in the, uh, on people with problematic uh, drug use, especially heroin users, we know that they are having problems to obtain money because they lost their main funding resources and they are dealing with higher prices, lower purities and lower drug availability. Uh, actually, in the last two weeks, uh, we have been collecting samples from safe consumption rooms and also from Metzineras, which is a project from women, uh, for women, women who take drugs. But because we cannot access uh, our main laboratory we are running tests uh, in our offices using the thin layer chromatography. And this technique allows us to detect uh, the most common drugs and also their adulterants. Uh, although it doesn't allow us uh, the, the quantification of compounds nor the identification of uh, unusual uh, substances. So at this stage, we cannot make solid comparisons with purity levels detected before COVID. In any case, the first, uh, the first results uh, point to an increase in adulteration, as, as we expected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pedro, anything to add to this? Well, I would, I would resume more or less the situation in Spain uh, since the government declared the state of Ireland in March the 14th. There were uh, some decrees and technical documents afforded by the government in which they adopted some measures for, for the limiting of mobility of individuals the, and the social and uh, economic activity uh, for all people. In none of these decrees, which is uh, the situation for us, in none of these decrees or technical documents, uh, there was some uh, uh, recommendations or some regulations mentioned regarding the special situation of um, of the services for people who use drugs. So we were without a guide, without rules, without anything. In this situation, our entity decided to adopt uh, their own services to the situation by themselves, with no help from the Spanish government, with no help from the regional government, and so in a very, very difficult situation. Mm. The specific problem in this, uh, uh, in this situation is uh, that the, we are not receiving any specific economic uh, measures, not even the specific ones for this situation of uh, alarm, but mm, even not the regular ones for 2020. And in some con uh, occasions, for some entities, they didn't receive even the, the economic measures for uh, 2019. So the situation is really dramatic for, for all these people. This is the reason why UNA decided to, uh, to try to get some recommendations, some measures from the uh, delegation of the government, the National Plan for Drugs. But we received no answer, no answer at all. 
Uh, the reason why, according to this delegation, is that uh, the responsibility for for our services are the regional government. But the regional governments uh, would not take decisions on this uh, since it is a special situation, the state of Ireland. And uh, then we decided to go with actually to Europe, which I think you, you know the document we sent to the main institutions, the European Commission, the European Parliament, the Council, and even the entity DDA, to apply for some sort of help, to apply for some sort of encourage to the to the Spanish government to take decision on on this. Uh, I don't know if to, to speak about the document or maybe later on if you if you prefer. Oh uh, yeah, I mean you can you can just uh, summarize it. What is it about? Okay, we uh, basically uh, applied for uh, some sort of uh, of uh, aspects that we understood were should be addressed uh, urgently. The first one was to to ensure the service provider uh, with the protection that they need. I mean, the the professional should work with uh, protective equipment and with diagnostic uh, test to know about their health and to know that they are, uh, that to check that they are okay to, to, to be able to give these uh, sort of services. Secondly, we applied to the um, institutions to encourage Spain to ensure effective drug services during the state of Holland. I mean, uh, obviously for outpatient uh, patient centers, for residential drugs uh, service centers, for harm reduction programs, obviously, and uh, for Center for Homeless uh, people that uh, are using drugs, which uh, according to our point of view, are the more vulnerable in all this situation, okay? We understand the government should facilitate people to access to the service they need, and uh, they, would, uh, they, they should ensure that um, these programs face-to-face -face that has been canceled because of the situation, should be reactivated uh, immediately after the the end of the of the state of of alarm uh, without any affectation at all. In a third way, uh, we encourage the the government to ensure services for people deprived of their liberty, uh, people in open regime, people serving alternative sentencing. I mean, people in active consumption or in rehabilitation processes, okay? I think this is very important for them since they are not uh, in, in prison, they, they are not receiving these services and it could uh, create a big problem, okay? Not only for them, but for the society. And finally, uh, we uh, think it, it is uh, really important to create or to implement a state coordination uh, regardless the region where the people live. I mean, the, the people that use drugs and the people and their families. Uh, I think it would be a mistake to let uh, regional uh, government to take individual decisions and not to take into account that we live in a country and we need uh, the same services and the same way, uh, measures for all of, of us. These are the main questions included in the document. Yeah, that's a very uh, important uh, document and all these are very important points. So one of the most uh, vulnerable groups of our society is homeless people and within homeless people, drug users who are homeless are maybe even more uh, vulnerable. And I know that, um, for example, in Barcelona, you, you try to deal with this uh, situation with, the, with, the, with, these, uh, with those people who use drugs and homeless. Can you uh, explain us about, uh, about that, Nuria? Well, this is a global uh, problem we have to face and, and to deal around the world. Obviously, this population have problems to stay at home because they don't have home to stay in. And they are usually rejected from the uh, most shelters because they are drug users. So with the confinement uh, rules derived from these times of COVID, we have the opportunity to set up a pioneer service imposed by the council city of Barcelona. It accommodates uh, 70 homeless uh, people, 40 men and 30 women with alcoholism and other addictions. And it covers basic needs such as accommodation, food, 
hygiene as well as supervised consumption rooms, psychosocial support and other activities. The building has three floors, one for men, uh, one for women, and the third one uh, is an isolated space for positive cases of, of COVID, uh, in addition to the common spaces. Uh, this shelter works in coordination with several public treatment services and also services of, of the Homeless Assistance Network. Uh, the space is a beautiful youth hostel provided by Pera Torres uh, Foundation and is managed by our organization, ABD. Uh, actually, we are very excited about, about it because it's a service that we have been expecting for uh, at least eight years. So, uh, and the shelter is working much better than we expect. Uh, the fact that, that uh, we have achieved a balance between men and women means that the admissions have, uh, have not been abrupt because women come into contact more slowly than men. And, and I have to say that uh, the shelter is a beautiful space and the equipment is really good, much appreciated by professionals as well as the users. And this allows us to work in good conditions and make everyone feel comfortable. Yeah, what about uh, like the other harm reduction services in the city, like uh, drug consumption rooms and uh, uh, needle exchange programs? Are they still open or are they available? Well, uh, our response, we have uh, to adapt the services uh, of the, to the new governmental regulations, in some cases by shooting down the programs, others by, by maintaining services at a low level and uh, developing new ones uh, to respond and face the new needs that emerged by this exceptional situation, such as, such as the new shelter for homeless people who use drugs that we were talking about. Uh, respecting the treatment centers uh, are working, but with a reduction uh, in opening hours. The presential consoles were canceled as well as blood and urine tests. Group and family therapies are being doing uh, done online uh, and they are tending and crisis uh, situations and offering non-presential care and health support. Uh, methadone is dispensed as regularly, but with little time reductions and specific prevention measures are being used. Uh, it's true is um, uh, we, we run a methadone express program for withdrawal syndrome and, uh, and it offers the possibility of accessing uh, substitute treatment with methadone to mitigate the difficulties in obtaining money, accessing heroin, and deal with the changes in the market, such as a higher adulteration, higher prices, and lower supplies. Uh, the, current, the, the current situation has induced an increment in the demand of substitution services and this new and extraordinary circuit allows uh, people access to prescription and dispensing within two, uh, 24 hours. So it's really very, very, very fast. The supervised consumption rooms maintain their usual opening hours with the usual uh, programs. Um, in the service in the services safe distance are being respect and showers and hygiene services are working now more even than never uh, than ever they are doing street controls uh, in the uh, street access controls in order to detect suspect cases of covid and isolation and hospital referrals when when needed um, in spaces like the social cafeteria, uh, where the security distance is difficult to maintain, are closed. So uh, the, the meals are, are, they are given the meals outside of the facility. Uh, we have to take into account that some social canteens are closed. So our services are provided even more food than before uh, COVID around uh, 150 meals twice a day, breakfast in the morning and a hot meal in the afternoon. And this is only possible because of the support of the nutritionists without borders and donations from the Nostrum restaurants. 
So citizen, citizen collaboration has been key to ensuring uh, food provision to population that is mostly homeless. Um, I think regarding energy control, we have shut down almost all the activities, interventions at the schools, interventions and parties, external training sessions and drug checking services. Uh, our main lab allocated in Hospital Del Mar has been closed. So we also have to stop the international drug checking service. And we basically, we are working at home and attending throughout mail or telephone. Okay, thank you, Arish. I'm really glad to see actually that uh, there are many signs of social solidarity in Barcelona and the response to this uh, crisis was uh, uh, relatively uh, fast or uh, rapid uh, con comparing to some other parts of Europe. But we know that, you know, Barcelona is not the whole, Sp whole of Spain and uh, th there are other, probably other situations in other parts of the country. Pedro, can you tell us uh, uh, about what's happening in, in, in other parts of Spain? Well, to give a general view of a view, uh, in general terms, I can say that uh, almost all programs are carried on, are going on with their problems, big problems. Uh, in fact, uh, the outpatient centers are giving uh, their programs through uh, telephone and online services. The problem is uh, uh, specifically with the face-to-face -face programs, which are impossible right now. Even in this case, some emergencies are being covered by these uh, programs with a uh, lot of uh, problems. Residential drug services centers are working uh, with uh, more or less uh, same activity as before, with some, obviously, some problems regarding the, pro the providers and uh, all these services they need from the out, outside. And uh, regarding the, um, the Centers for Homeless, uh, I knew the program that Nuria showed us and I understand, I, I, I find it is a really good initiative and some parts of uh, Spain are trying to do the same services. In fact, I know the, the, the case in Sevilla, in Andalusia, uh, apart from the spaces that were uh, stated uh, for these homeless people who use drugs, uh, we have, well, they have uh, opened three new spaces, big spaces to, to cover their needs. Uh, they can sleep there, they can have their, their needs, their main needs. And, uh, and uh, I think there are about 600 uh, new users in these uh, big spaces, apart from uh, about 70 users that are in hostels in hostels uh, which are covered uh, part of the social security part from the town hall services and the part big part from private uh, enterprises so more or less we are trying to to do uh, to keep uh, all the all the programs with a lot of uh, problems because we don't receive any help from from the national government the state uh, and the regional governments. But uh, I want to think that uh, with a lot of energy, with a lot of uh, uh, work, our, our entities are trying not to lose uh, the programs and the, and the users. Mm -hmm. I see in many parts of Europe, you know, that, I mean, you also mentioned it, that one of your recommendation was that the government should provide protective equipment to people who work in the field. Mm -hmm. But does it really happen? I mean, I, you said that the national government doesn't help you, but can uh, service providers access to like masks and, uh, and gloves and things like that? Uh, I, I can tell you that um, about a couple of days ago, we began receiving some protection, uh, some masks, uh, but it's been from the very beginning, we, we have been working uh, with them without protection, with the necessary protection. And uh, even now we don't have tests. Uh, I, I, I have heard that uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday, some of our entities received uh, some uh, testing uh, to check the situation of, uh, of uh, the uh, of the both the users and the, and the professionals, we decided that it was uh, most, more important to, to give this test to the users, 
to, to check the, the population to see if they are okay. And afterwards, and when some more tests will be coming, we will try to do all the tests to all the professionals and users of these entities. But it's been uh, a lack of help, a big lack of help, because I understand this is a really important thing to, to have at least the protection to be able to serve to be able to keep the, the prongs, to be able to uh, help these uh, people and uh, even not to uh, create a bigger problem, okay? Yeah, Nuria, you have the same problems? Probably the main, pro the, the, the main problem we were facing in the harm reduction centers in the first weeks uh, were the acquisition of sanitary masks and other uh, protection materials, as well as the difficulty in testing professionals with clinical symptoms, which translates into continuous sick leaves without confirmation of positive cases. Now we have enough masks for professionals and users, but I have to say that it, it has been possible, again, thanks to the effort and contact of our networks. Not, uh, uh, they were not provided by the government. So we improve uh, step by step. We are improving the situation, but not for the effort of the government. But I understand Barcelona and Catalonia is, a, is, a, is different our drug policy that, that in another spaces of Spain. Uh, and, and we have more harm reduction centers and more um, um, better drug policy, I think. Okay. Uh, I do. I do agree with uh, what uh, Nuria said absolutely, and I must say that uh, before uh, the protective uh, uh, equipment and this max will come from the government, uh, there there are there were a million of uh, private initiatives to uh, try to create some sort of masks and some sort of uh, protective equipment, but. Uh, I suppose uh, the, the best thing to do right now is to to receive this uh, protective equipment, technical protective equipment from the government. Okay, okay so uh, if you would now sit down for five minutes with uh, the Spanish government, what would you, what would be the no, most priority for you to ask from, from, from the government? Myself? Yeah. Well, I would obviously uh, encourage them to uh, state some very, very uh, urgent measures regarding the services for, for people who use drugs. Uh, I would encourage them absolutely to, to keep or to, to give uh, equipment, uh, protective equipment for professionals. And uh, I would encourage them to try to uh, keep all the services on and uh, to um, warranty that uh, these services, even the, the one face to face, as, as we can say, will be reactivated as soon as this will end. And uh, I think this is the, the most important, obviously, to uh, try to get uh, uh, a real state coordination for all things that keep us uh, informed and that give us all the necessity to be able to face this uh, situation uh, as the rest of the health service do. Yeah, uh, we, we are now speaking a lot also about this crisis as an opportunity, you know, that it's not only a crisis, but we can also learn something from this, from this crisis for the future. So, uh, Nuria, what do you think? What can we learn? Uh, what can we learn and what, uh, what are the lessons learned from this crisis? There are a lot of lessons we can learn about this crisis, not only in the drug uh, policy or the drug area, in the life, uh, in the life, in, in all the scenes. I don't know. We are very happy with the new shelter. I think it's a it's a big pity that these opportunities, these uh, new resources, appears with the uh, disaster situations. You know, uh, but they think. Uh, the, the, the shelter it was created in, a, in this exceptional circumstance, but it opens the door to hope for its permanent establishment. So we expect that uh, this new shelter maintains, uh, or we know 
we, we know that this shelter, uh, the future is not, uh, this not occur in the same space uh, where it's now allocated because it's a temporary achievement, but we hope it will continue in another space with human and good conditions, because you know, uh, we are, um, we are usually have the, 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 um, the worst uh, spaces for people who use drugs. They, they are not living in good conditions. So for example, in this, in this new shelter, people are hallucinating, people are super happy with the uh, equipment and the uh, conditions they are living. Pedro, any lessons learned you would like to share with us? Well, being realistic, uh, I think no one could uh, expect this situation. So it is difficult to, to, to think about the future because uh, I think uh, we will uh, always be shocked by these situations. But maybe the, the main lesson I, am, uh, I think we should learn is that uh, we cannot live day by day. We must think about the future. We cannot be without protection, without um, sanitary uh, tools. We cannot uh, be uh, working day by day with the only resources that we think we need in this day. We need to think about the future. We need to think about bad uh, times, about uh, possible situations like this one. And we, try, uh, we, need, uh, we should try to, to have some second option in this uh, in these cases i for example uh, remember this the the example of uh, finland i think it's finland that uh, has been has been uh, keeping some materials for this situation some uh, protective uh, uh, equipment some tests some masks and now they are suffering a bit less than the rest of the of the europe for example I, I just want to, to I would like to add uh, that this situation show us some beautiful things, uh, right? Like uh, if the human quality of a society is measured by the quality standards of living of its most, most vulnerable members, then I think Barcelona is showing right now a high level of human quality and an example for uh, the rest of the world. So. I, I, I think it's a good opportunity to push this this uh, this kind of resources. Yeah, thank you. That was a very good uh, conclusion of our uh, discussion, and thank you so much for being available and joining this uh, call uh, and uh, informing people about what's happening in Spain. And, um, and for those who were watching us online on Facebook, uh, please follow us on social media. We will inform you about the next uh, uh, videos in the. Uh, stories from Frontline series uh, and stay safe and stay informed. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ciao. Take care.